Uh, obviously, there was no episode of Power last week. Before I get into this episode, the question that a lot of people who watch Raising Kane and seem to have, at least from what I'm seeing in different discussion groups, is about Breeze and who people think Breeze may be, which I was of the thought that Breeze was just somebody that Kanan had told Tariq about. I didn't realize that, I guess, like really early on in Power, like first season shit, that Tommy had also mentioned Breeze. Breeze, yeah. So Breeze is actually a real person. I thought, yeah, Breeze is I thought Kanan just lied to Tariq about Breeze. Breeze is the person that Kanan and them set up to run yeah. the game, and then Tasha and Ghost set Kanan up mm-hmm. and iced him out. Yeah, so I had to go back and like figure that shit out. But regardless, do you have any theories on who Breeze may be or if Breeze has even shown up in Raising Canaan at all? I think smart money is Marvin. Some people say that. I think smart money is Marvin because I, I think his character arc, to me, is going towards a person who survives the turmoil Mm -hmm. rock's role is is all too classic almost a little tropey right the 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 star that burned too bright until it just burned up eventually succumb to some sort of tragedy yeah right i think it's marvin i think it's marvin i've seen that but i've also seen uh cardiac reed no because I think there was some tie from Breeze to Maryland, I think, or D.C. or somewhere around there. Maybe Homeboy that we've seen today. Could be as well. Billy D. Williams. Billy D. Williams. Elder Barge. <laughs> or I've also seen Unique, which nah. I think that was a little bit of a reach. And he wouldn't change his moniker. Yeah, he already is Unique. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I think it's just interesting that people have their own little theories as to who Breeze and be. Now there's, there's also been some that have been literally way off and I don't even (laughs) know how people come to some of these conclusions. Like you'll see some people be like, symphony is Breeze. Like, whoa, (laughs) whoa. Now that's a, now if you can make that make sense. And I mean, really take the time on it to piece it together. That would be an epic character arc it would be. i mean of epic proportions we talking john snow level character development if we go from symphony basket to breeze <laughs> uh power's not that good at writing hey well hey listen we're gonna talk about that today we're going to discuss okay all right let's get into this episode power book three raising Cain in season two episode seven no love lost juke starts the episode at her ex snow bunny's grave Homegirls Pops pulls up and explains that him and his Karen are divorcing. He then explains that because Juke made Nicole happy, that if Juke needs anything, he got her. Juke got a lot of white friends. Yes, very much so. <laughs> Them, a lot of white Burke. She got connections out here. Yes, she does. Uh, I never thought that the dad was the problem in that situation. I don't think anybody watching this thought that dad was He's the problem. He's always been very understanding. So, yeah. But then I think he also knew that. His, his girl, daughter, daughter was, was gay. Yeah, I think he's just been cool with it from jump. Like, yeah. look, as long as she's happy and you know doing what she needs to do, she's cool. Mm-hmm. Turns out Lulu couldn't deny Zisa's advances for very long. <laughs> just one episode. <laughs> I'm literally confused to why he even denied her in the first place. If he's just gonna turn around and hit it now, especially with everything that she knows about the whole crown situation, she is the ops. And I, I, I know that I have been, you know, suspicious of a lot of power women, uh, you know, coming on to us in this universe. But I've been right about every single one. Jessica and uh, 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 who was the other the other snake? Jessica, Zisa, old girl's mama. Y'all think I'm being hard on them, but they actually snaking. Yeah, no facts. Facts. Try to tell y'all. So be on the lookout for Zisa because she is definitely there for a reason. He not even showing her the attention that she really won't. Just saying. So Cool Runnings pulls up without the sled to tell Lou that Crown owed their guy 50 large. And if it doesn't get paid, the studio is theirs. Nigga, how fucking convenient that the day after this man dies and no one's supposed to know about it keep that in mind the only people that know about this right now when he gets approached by the rosters 
is him and Zisa. Yeah. They're the only two that know the crown is dead. Mm. So how convenient is it that the day after he dies, they come knocking, looking, collecting on their debt? How convenient is that? And you know what? Even that could be seen as just happens. Just happen. dumb luck. But there's something that happens later on that connects. At least your uh, my theory, theory about what the fuck is going on here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I see you, Zisa. Mm-hmm. Oddly enough, Zisa still thinks Lou is in the mood after all that bullshit. You should finish. <laughs> you didn't hear them. <laughs> I have a problem Come here. here. Come Can here. Let me look. You got fifty k in there. <laughs> Hell is wrong with you? Oh shit. Kanan is playing his Coleco vision, and bro is absolutely garbage on the sticks. <laughs> he then ponders on whether or not he should open Howard's envelope, but instead walks out the room with his gun. Fam, at first I thought he was the first one to ever rage out over console gaming. <laughs> this nigga about to shoot the TV over the game. I don't Some know bullshit. why. He, right, I don't know why he ain't just look at the paper, man. Yeah, what you waiting on? Hey, I, He's I, waiting on his mom to lie to him some more. Because before. plot, let's stretch it out for sure. No. Marvin invites. Oh, you know what? I gotta, I gotta rewrite that portion of it because I, I originally thought that the Italian bro, apparently all white people look like to me because I thought the Italian bro was. We thought the same shit. <laughs> I thought for sure that old girl was smashing the Italian. I thought that was the whole reason Marvin that he was like, oh yeah, no, he, okay. So yeah, I should probably rewrite this portion. But Marvin invites the Italian dude to the pizza shop. Marvin consults bro to run a hit on a rat for him, which obviously turns out to be Tony. And bro wants to keep it discreet from his father if he does it. Not sure how Marvin is going to fit that into one of his comedy bits, but I'm sure he can make it happen. Hey. <laughs> I literally, well, w- when we get to it, but but I, I was cracking the fuck up. I was crying. <laughs> we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Cartier and Rock are on date number three, I believe, and Billy D. Williams slash Ella DeBarge walks in. Funny enough, Rock seems to understand Cartier's problems more than her own, but we see what she's trying to set up once. I didn't see the gears weren't working because obviously I didn't know what she was going to do next, but now that we know what she's going to do next, it's a little different, but that's what I thought at the time. At mm-hmm. least. Now, before I get into Kanan returning to, uh, you know, homegirl, uh, with the gun. Uh, I thought it was hilarious that they were playing Anita Baker after what Marvin called Latoya Luckett. Fam. They have nothing to do with each other. I just thought it was funny that they used Anita Baker after he called her. Also, also Anita Baker. how in the fuck were you like watching me or something? <laughs> how are you perfectly prepared Anita Baker playing in the background? Do you just wear lingerie throughout the day? Yep. Why aren't you at work? <laughs> what do you do during the day? Like what? What the fuck is going on here? Why are you perfectly primped and prepared for this? Yeah. Homegirl is thirsty, thirsty as well. Yo. That whole scene kind of reeked of desperation. And coupled with the voiceover from the Reverend talking about not sleeping with the mother of your or whatever he said. Yeah, that we got to we got to we got we got to call it what it is. She's a predator. Yes. I was going to get into that. She is a predator. Yes, very like much so. 1,000% sexual abuser. 1,000%. And we'll get into a specific quote that was just nasty. Like, she is fucking wild. And this is a this is a, a lesson every girl has to learn. What the? Where did you grow? Who raised you? Yeah, no, the scenes get exponentially worse. But we'll we'll get into that. Marvin noticed that the fiends ain't been served, and it's on account of Lou trying to run the cash out before it even got counted, which... Lou Wilder. Lou Wilder. But just say something. At least you can say something to Marvin. But then he know Marvin gonna take it back to Rock, and then Rock gonna be up his ass about it. Okay, so you know what? I was confused because of what happens later, but I'm I'm assuming... Well, no, because he still got jumped. I was gonna say I, I, I would think that he would have took that money and paid off them dudes yeah what did he do with the money because he went and got a loan right well so i would have thought you? i would have thought the loan was to pay the money back for rock but he got jumped so he obviously didn't pay that money to the the jamaicans so i don't know what he did with that money yeah what the fuck did he do with the bread writing <laughs> writing 
Homeboy from the church is mad thirsty for Jukebox's number. Latoya Luckett seems happy that she's fraternizing with a fellow churchgoer, though. Fam, well, let's rewind back to the to the Bible study. Oh, yeah? Nod your head like a good girl? That's what you believe, Juke? Oh, yeah? Lay down with the woman as you lay down with the man? Oh, yeah? That was, that was a little nuts. Oh, yeah? That's what you want? So anything for mommy, apparently, shit, yeah. I'll even give up my sexuality because mommy... That is crazy, Juke. That's nuts. It seems like she's really trying to give this whole thing a go. Like and change bar everything. anything. That's why I keep that's why I keep saying this thing with Marvin is about spite at this point. Yeah. It's about spite. Yeah. But hey. Now now that but that that gives us an interesting out for Latoya Luckett because we know this 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 relationship doesn't last for one reason or another. Yeah. When she finds out her daughter is is gay what happens there you can only hold up that beard for so long mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what happens howard sees scrap's mom in the precinct and learns that scrap wasn't the snitch after all it was nigga. his mom nigga <laughs> my bad <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but I don't even. I, I I literally don't blame him though. Yeah, I don't blame him at all. Sure, like that's that's not on him at all. That that you decided to move off of that shit. Right. Since when did you start trusting my word is bond? You don't even like me. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Yeah. Marvin looks for Rock and finds Juke. Marvin then asks about Latoya Luckett and let Juke know that bro, she left you. Uh, he then admits that, yeah, he fucked up at some point, but at least he was here for Like her. I said, I've been here. I raised you. I put a roof over your head over all these years. Got you all of these interchangeable polos and everything. Yeah. Me. Me. Yep. Before you start stealing. Facts. I raised you. I stayed. I was the father, the parent, the mother, all of that. Mm-hmm. It was me. Like, like... Just, Juke is 15, so Marvin had to have some pretty uncomfortable moments with his daughter, you know, mm-hmm. as a parent. Yep. And he did that because he's your dad. Yep. Right, wrong, or in between, he's your dad. Latoya Luckett was out there trying to be, you know, I need a baker. with all my heart, I <laughs> love you, baby. That song's a classic. Rock meets up with Homeboy and tries to cut Cartier in the price. Here she goes again trying to expand without doing her homework on the players involved. No, 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 no. I like this. Do you? I like this. Do I you? do. So at the table, mm-hmm. when Homeboy pulls up, she immediately notices that Cartier is threatened by Dro. Mm-hmm. And then once he walks away, Cartier tries to address him as his subordinate. He wouldn't be nothing without me, right? He's Absolutely. my distro. Trying to assert his dominance to cover up his insecurities. Yeah. She presses on it. She put her put her thumb right in that shit. Didn't you say that all about that uh about that about that insubordination leads to insurrection shit? Or is just some shit you be saying? <laughs> Ooh. She was like, hey, he just called you a bitch. What you gonna do about it? She <laughs> what, called what you it out about for what it was. What you gonna was. do about it? No, I don't think bruh meant anything by it. I don't think he was trying to flex or trying to big up himself at all. He, she saw in the moment, okay, you're fucked up. And I also know about your mentality and how you like dominance. If I threaten that dominance, you're going to go put your hands on that man. He's going to be violated and he'll be more willing to talk. I have a chance to set up shop in Maryland now. With a trusted distro. Because if Cartier Farid is fucking with you, you're trusted. So let me give you a scenario that could have happened. What if Cartier at some point saved that man's life and he is indebted to him for whatever reason? Or just extremely loyal to him for whatever reason, despite his his uh, clear overindulgence and, and dominance? There is a... There's there's a, a slight risk she's taking, absolutely. Like, and he says that. He acknowledges that. They're like, you got big balls. How you know I'm not just about to go back and tell him that you tried to do this? Well, I'm looking at your eye, mm-hmm. and I don't think you really want to fuck with him no more. 
So at very least, you're going to do your homework before you go run back and tell him everything that's going on here. I could be an out for you or I could be bullshit. If I'm bullshit, you can find that out before you go run back and tell him. So, yeah, I'm taking a risk. But given the, the shiner that's on your face right now, one that I strategically placed there, by the way. I think you're going to be a little bit more apt now to listen to me. True. I, I, I loved everything about that sequence. I, I will give Because you that. while I think Cartier is running game on her, she's playing the game back. She's not sitting there being wooed and, and, and being overtaken by his over-masculinity. You know what I mean? Like, she, she's not enamored with him right. and everything that he provides. I think she sees things that he does that she wants. Yeah. And she's going to get just close enough to take it. Mm -hmm. it's just right now there's this interesting chess match who's going to get the leverage first Cartier for Reed or Rock the thing to keep in mind with Rock is that now the fucked up thing about it is that she's fighting battles she didn't have to fight you got these fucking Italians on your back you got Unique you didn't have to have all this other shit going on too while you trying to play this three dimensional chess with Cartier Symphony Boskett is about to dip to North Carolina and tells Kanan Kanan's clearly hurt but he's also aware that Symphony wants Kanan to tell Rock but that doesn't end up happening anyway. I think he wanted to originally make a clean getaway, but then we see that that doesn't happen. Yeah. After Kanan and Symphony's meeting, uh, Burke sees them leave and uses that as a chance for her to pull up on Symphony Bosket. Somebody mentioned something in the uh, in the comments last week or two weeks ago um, for episode six. And they said, do we think that Burke is internal affairs? And that, I kind of feel silly for never saying that because that makes a lot of sense. Now, they kind of step over that. They kind of step all over that that theory in this episode a little bit. There's still some potential for it to be true, I think. But um, other than that, man, I just don't know. There's something other than, oh, well, they tasked me to investigate his murder. Because... I, I just get the feeling that in a case where a murder stinks to high or not a murder, excuse me, a shooting investigation for your partner that stinks to high hell somehow gets left alone. Especially when you, when it leads to threads that, you know, predate your relationship with that partner. Things about potential children and, and, and sexual partners like. I, I, I don't even know if I can. Like negative a thousand percent chance that that ends up coming to light in its entirety. Even gets pursued to this point by your by your own partner. Mm -hmm. Highly unlikely is an understatement. Yeah, is an understatement. Yeah, I agree. Rock is trying to buy that crib and is being told that because of the homeowners association, she needs to provide proof of income. Not that I think Fuck that that'll be. Association. Not that I think that it'll be a, a hard issue for her to forge some documents, but I don't know. Thought it was interesting at least that I think she's still trying to buy the house. are racist. Why does it even make sense? So we all own property individually, but let's create a council of select members within the the neighborhood to tell people what is allowed to be on their properties, how they're allowed to maintain their properties, and what even additions and, and changes that they may be held financially responsible. On their property. And then pay that group money every month because they got to pay homeowners association dues. Yeah, man, I don't. It's a little nuts. Yeah, no. Burke pulls Symphony Bosket over. She is god awful at being tactful when it comes to her interrogation. And because of it, Symphony wants out. I'm also pretty sure it's against the law for holding him there in that fashion. I don't think she can do that. No, she can't. So, yeah, that whole scene was BS. She's thirsty as fuck yeah she is like ultra quenched i feel like symphony is a, a smart enough person to also know that no he knows all his illegal. rights he knows exactly <laughs> what the fuck is going on like why are you pressing me right now but he should also know that that's illegal for her to detain him in that nature over well that's what he asked her he's like hey, look you gonna give me a ticket for whatever or what but then she takes his id and then walks off literally the minute that she said and he asked him what did you pull me over for? And she says, that's what I'm trying to find out. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're off the rails already. Right. Like 
everything from this moment on is an illegal search. Yeah. You have no probable cause. You're literally telling me. Mm hmm. Yes. Burke is not that good of a cop, man. <laughs> she's just like not. really nosy. Yes. She's just like really fucking nosy. And she's got one great contact in records. Like one super uh. great contact in records. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Juke pulls up to a video shop to get her tape fixed, presumably to get it back to Nicole's pops. Mm -hmm. uh, Unique sees Rock's moves as planned and calculated to keep him and Warrell in Jersey Duh, until they can move him out permanently. And they moved out of the building. Yeah. Oh, my God. Just go put a bullet in Warrell's head and tell Unique to slide right or he get one, too. Probably when did you both. start caring about what the Italians wanted anyways? Right. Just say he met an untimely end. Yeah. Unfortunate thing. He was family. I mean, you ultimately can't prove that Rock did it unless not, she does some stupid shit. Or not dealing with these niggas, man. That should have been the work that the Italians did it was unique. Shit. Yeah. Italian homeboy asks Unique about Marvin, and Unique really doesn't have too much bad to say about Marvin besides, fuck Marvin. <laughs> Which I thought was... Crazy because, yeah, well, no, because it's not like Marvin shot at. Well, no, he did. He did. He did. He did. And he saw him in that van, did he not? Lit my nigga shit up. He left him alone when he had his kid, though. Didn't he? Uh, Was that the same time? No, that wasn't the same time. In the van with the, the machine gun? Damn. That was, he Didn't he have his kid with him? Yeah. You know what? He didn't leave him alone. You're right. And I'm pretty sure Unique saw Marvin, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe he didn't. But he assumed it yeah. was rocking them, at, le at the very least. That was some treacherous times. Yeah, for sure. Burke is pressing Buddy from the document room for even more and has allegedly bribed him over some shoplifting charge for someone close to him. Uh, someone in the office is clearly listening close, by the way. Finally. Yep. This nigga Howard, who has all the years of experience over Burke <laughs> in the world, has an inside contact keeping an eye on her on what the hell she's looking for. Like, I just don't understand. Like, even her girlfriend told her, like, what are you trying to do? You're not even investigating the shooting anymore. You're investigating this man's life. What do you, what do you, you want him in jail? Are you internal affairs? <laughs> That's what I, I was getting at when she they said they kind of... Or when I said they kind of stepped over the theory that she's internal affairs. Yeah. Because. She wouldn't have asked that. But either. also she could still be undercover for internal affairs. True. But then that would require. She would. She obviously wouldn't tell her, her girlfriend that. Yeah. But then that would also require a reason for internal affairs to be looking Because Howard's at, a dirty cop. He's been yeah, a dirty no, cop. For sure. For sure. But like I feel like that would require something specific no like he has been a dirty cop and so there's probably reason but i feel like there would i need feel to be like a he did reason. something for he did something for rock in the very beginning of the series that established their relationship i don't know if he killed somebody because i mean obvious uh, uh uh relationships with unique and rock aren't i don't think those are grounds for internal affairs to be well shit that's not, enough for oh, them well, to start investigating we don't we don't know what the relationship was until burke started looking into all the shit yeah um and then you know things like getting canaan or getting famous out of jail with the ten thousand like, dollars all those things happened after burke was already her his partner so like maybe there is a reason why internal affairs would be called in on howard but i don't think we know of the we reason. could not know yeah we could not know um, Shit, they couldn't know about this whole rock being pregnant at 16 thing. Yeah. Which, yeah, they're going to have to explain that thoroughly. They're going to have to explain that thoroughly unless this was just a dual predator episode. Wouldn't be surprised, to be honest with you. Rock is talking to her plug and Juliana, who has finally gotten out of her bodega clothes... Uh, which she feels up, weird. Didn't she, huh? Felt weird to yeah, see. Yeah, but like she like wouldn't dress like that in the bodega. It'd be a dead right. giveaway. Right, for sure. But crazy. Uh, Juliana peeps a guy who walked into the restaurant, and lo and behold, it's a nigga associated with Cartier's guy. Mm hmm. So that was. Also, nuts that she didn't say anything 
Like, hey, is he with you? Well, I also don't know if she was because he Maybe was she obviously wasn't paying attention enough. Well, he was attracted to her, but I don't know if Juliana was attracted by him too. And maybe the reason she was looking over is because she was like, oh, nigga looks nice. Fair enough. And so maybe she didn't peep like, oh, he's in here scoping, scoping things out. out. Yeah, yeah. Maybe she was just like, oh, he's checking me out. Which, and 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 look, look at homeboy. Look at homeboy. Right now, what does Rock do with the potential of that setup? I can have Distro in Maryland set up. Within months, you know? Mm-hmm. So, you know, stay off me about this unique shit for a little bit. Keep supplying, and I'll keep you apprised of the of the expansion. That That's two or three moves ahead for me. Push on your insecurities. Make you react the way that I know you're going to, because you've already showed it to me. Mm-hmm. That's going to force homeboy my way. And now... I have a treat to dangle in front of the plug and Juliana to buy me time on Unique. So she's playing the game now. At least they're showing us her playing the game now. It's, it's at least it's fleshing way it out. More yeah. calculated than what she's ever been before. Now in she's season. in the fight. She's playing the game. She's playing multi-dimensional chess now. The thing that pulls this all together is that she's got competitors. There are going to be people that continue to push her. The Italians, unique, Cartier. They're on her butt. Yeah. So I am uh I'm I am very interested in what's going on in Raising Canaan right now. And even more than that, well, I think I already said this. That Raising Canaan is probably the best show in Power Universe, right? I think now. you literally said that last week. I think week. I said that last week. Okay, cool. Not last week, but two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Raising Canaan is definitely the best show in in, in Power Universe. Nice I think course. it has. I think it has, outside of Tommy, and obviously people love Tariq. Outside of those two characters, they probably have the best characters. Mm-hmm. They've got the best story arcs. They've got the best character arcs. Maybe Man, maybe I, story I, arcs to Ghost. Because that's still running off of the main theme of yeah. the original power story. But in terms of Force original could, content... Force could have had a leg up if they didn't kill Ju- uh, kill Liliana. But that's, that that's, story arc in and of itself is wild how she was... I don't like the characters on Force more than I like the characters in Reyes and Kanan. Well, I mean, the one story arc is probably one of the craziest story arcs considering we haven't seen her since Power Season 1. What are we talking about? Liliana. Yeah, no, that's that's cool. She was a good character, but it's just like you but got her, you got Tommy, and it's just like eh, a literally little, everybody. A else. lot of blah. Yeah. A lot of blah. <laughs> uh well maybe But um, you got really great characters over here in Raising Canaan. You got Rock, you got Kanan, you've got Howard is a really complex character. I like uh um, Marvin. What is his name? The older brother. Diamond. Diamond. Diamond, yeah, no, I, I like his character. Diamond and Gerard. Literally everybody else is like, what what do we got going on here? Uh yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's up there. It's then up it, there. Yeah, like they doing nutty shit on force. They got boy over there with cauliflower ear. He don't even have that in real life. <laughs> it's like, why are we doing this? Oh, and I like um D Mac. I kinda like D Mac. He cool. He's he's gonna need a, a much bigger I like Ray Strummer. next season. He cool. That's crazy. <laughs> he's gonna need a much bigger arc in, in season two to make me just as a whole though like there aren't very many bad characters yeah and, and like even even uh uh um uh, what's your boy light skin curly hair diddy son crown camacho. crown camacho even him who was an annoying character he was a useful character Useful, right? But there, Crown is ass as a character. Famous is ass as a character. No, famous is ass as a character. Maybe <laughs> just because they just don't give him anything to do. I don't think Crown was ass. I don't as like a character. Zisa. Uh, but you know what? I, I, you can't fault not liking a character too. Like you even like, not liking. You're gonna like you. You may not like her character, but yeah. she's going to be a better character I was by say, the end of the season. Even in not liking the character, that doesn't mean that their character isn't. Does it mean something to the whole of the show? There are a lot of useful. nothing characters in power. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, there were so many nothing characters in power, they just had to decide to kill a girlfriend. 
<laughs> in the last season. So yeah. yeah. That 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 that's how useless some of those po- those those plot threads were in Ghost. That's a fact. That's not that's not necessarily happening Ooh, here. There's a lot in Ghost now that I think about it. Yeah, there there is not that's not happening here. <laughs> there's a whole lot of nothing happening up there. Yeah. So I so I commend you, Raising Canaan, for being the best show in Power Universe right now. Lou gets jumped by Bob Marley's band. Any thoughts on him getting jumped at Seems all? Seems convenient. I, I would say so. Seems convenient. And he goes to, right to the one place that he knows that he can go. Cartier knows that too without even speaking to Lou. He knows he don't want to go back to his sister. Mm-hmm. Crown is obviously dead and he knows that because of Zisa. I'm trying to tell y'all, man, this is... He's playing a game with Rock and Lou, and Rock is playing a game, and he doesn't realize it, and it's just who's going to get to who first. I am very interested to see down I, the stretch. I agree with that. Yeah, because it's uh, very obvious that at at the very least, Cartier has a little bit of leverage with the situation with Lou now. Like, it might just end in a stalemate. It could. Like, Cartier might be like, yeah, I got your little brother underneath my thumb. He owe me money. And now he's mine. And then she can be like, that's cool or whatever. I got your distro down to Maryland. Yeah, what do you do? Stalemate. No, I, like, they, they I like a good, you know, political sidebar within our drug films. This is really good. They this go nice. into cahoots with each other and kill off Lou. Because Rock doesn't give a shit about Lou anymore. And kill off Lou. Yeah. Shut up. No, that's not happening. <laughs> Rock doesn't give a shit about Lou. He's been trying to get in the music business. Fuck that nigga. First of all, Lou is death proof, okay? <laughs> That's a fact. That is a fact. Lou is good. That is a fact. He might be Breeze. I don't think so. Maybe not. I don't think so. Marvin has graduated anger management class and even gets a toast from Gerald. Marvin tries his bald headset on Gerald, but it seemingly didn't land. So it probably won't end up in his comedy special. Yeah, don't put that one in. You got better jokes than that. <laughs> Uh, uh, Renee hands Marvin her number and couldn't be more awkward about it. Hey, like, hey. Jesus, how hard is it to be smooth about offering hey. therapy services when you're she a not therapist? supposed to be doing that shit? Sure, but she's not supposed to be number. fraternizing with her with here's, her clients. Here's my card if you ever need to talk about anything because I'm a therapist. Simple, doesn't have to be awkward. It was really awkward. Because she wants to give him the draws right now. For sure. Right now For on sure. the coffee table. Like yes. I predicted in episode one. Well, I think everybody predicted No, that. That they clear. didn't. No, that they did not. That. Well, we did. Both of us did. That was clear as day, though. In in the first week? I, I will give EP1? you. EP1? Here's what I will give you. She will probably bridge the whole juke and... In Marvin situation, called that one too. It, it, now, if that happens, I'll give you that over this because I I think that was I specific from specifically one. in the first. Go back and watch episode one review of <laughs> Raising Canaan on Back of the Bus, and podcast. then watch the whole season. Uh, but I specifically named as my season predictions: Marvin gonna get them draws, and that therapist is gonna help bring Juke back to Marvin. Right. Specifically. But I think half of one it down, happened. one to go. Well, technically, she didn't. Give oh, it's it's a done yet. deal. I wouldn't be surprised. They are so deprived of sex scenes. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if the next episode don't open up with him blowing her back out. Uh, I can see that as well. I would not I be can surprised. See that, unless she dies at some point. Uh, let's, she just gets shot. Jesus, she's not a real person. Why she gotta die? Why her character gotta die though? Power. Okay. It's power. <laughs> uh, SBZ pulls up on Rock to let her know that he's leaving, and I'm thoroughly upset that I may never get a chance to call him SBZ again. Why I never thought about that nickname before? I don't know. But Symphony Basket. Good for him. Yeah. Good for him. And I, I, I think I am pleased with how that character is probably going to leave the show at least for a little bit. Because they didn't make him do the stereotypical, oh, I love you so much that I'll just throw away my morals and everything I know to be right to be with you. Funny enough. He's actually sticking to his guns and he's going to leave. He tells her about Burke. She goes into this whole bullshit and he's just like, all right, man, I'm out. Yeah, right, right. See, this is why I'm out now. (laughs) What did you tell her? What did you tell her? Your secrets are safe with me, Rock. 
I ain't got no secrets. All right, bitch. All right, yeah, I'm gone. I'm gone. <laughs> we up. Hey yo, hey yo, we out. <laughs> Woo, yeah, no, no. I, I thought that was great. Um, so either Kanan was hitting homegirl all day, Bro. or the people in post completely forgot to finish Kanan's story arc. He is and threw so it back in last shocked, night. and she's got a problem. Like she has a yes. mental problem. There's something wrong with her up here. Well, yes. So, like you mentioned earlier, definitely a predator, uh, and absolutely should be called out for such. Uh, not for stealing her daughter's boyfriend, boyfriend, which I, I still don't, I don't know where they became boyfriend and girlfriend. Cause he's talked to her like two times. Uh, but because the nigga's under 18 and she's saying weird shit, like you're just the right age for me. Ew. Oh, that shit was so weird. Ew. That shit was so weird. Uh, every girl has to learn this lesson. <sighs> Yeah, aside from being clearly manipulative and a predator, she also seems kind of touched in the head, because I don't know what the fuck is going on with her. Yo, she is fucking bugging. She is crazy. Bugging. But hey, don't you give her no mental disease for real, like in, in like in the show, mm-hmm. though. Don't, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't, don't show a very real, very real scenario. Can they the only one that lost their virginity to somebody's mama? That's a fact. Do not... Do not step on that and be like, oh, well, she can't control it. She has a sickness. Man, that what? better not be the conversation between old girl and Rock next episode. Oh, my mama's sick. No, she's sick. She's sick. Very much so. Because we, we, uh, we I, I, I can only imagine. I can only imagine what we're about to get from Howard and, and Rock and that story about how she ended up pregnant at 16. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I'm just gonna hold hold out hope that it's something that's like reasonable, like long le- wrong legally, but maybe we can empathize with it from a human standpoint. Whatever it is, I'm hoping it's not abuse in the way that that would probably. Oh my god! Yeah, because not not only is it now going to be that that you know howard has to be as canaan's father but it's going to validate every lie she's ever told to canaan about her about his father it's going to validate it all it's going to make it seem like it was a mercy yeah so don't 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 please don't please don't i know i know what the knee jerk reaction is zig when you should have zag you know don't do that don't agree so Lou pulled up to Cartier for the 50K and boom, bro is about to end up in the streets again or Cartier is going to have his leverage. Something is going to happen because kill of this 50K. They're going to have to kill him. And now for him to get 50K, he basically just sold him 25% of the label, mm-hmm. which was a fucking mistake. One well, extra, I thought, because he already has... Some interest, I thought. He said, tell me half. Oh, his. yeah, because he's going to be a silent partner, which means he owns 50% now. He wanted half of Crown's half. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. He and you 50%? But, yeah, so if they all own 33% of it, then half would give Lou 51%? 18 or percent? It'd be 18 yeah, te- on top of the... Technically how it splits, 25. it would give Lou the, the controlling half of it. Just barely, probably. Yes. Well, I mean, even 1% is majority, so half a percent is majority. Yeah, it's it's close to 51-49, essentially. <sighs> yeah, man, I don't like that. Me neither. I don't like that at all. Me neither. Marvin's Italian hitman hired the racist from the Catskills, and I become enthused to see his hilarious racist hijinks in this episode. He must be like the discount hitman. He got to be the cheapest whack <laughs> on the block. Like, he got to. <sighs> he got to be the cheapest one. How y'all keep going back to this man? Uh, and, and, bruh, does he ever do it right? I was not disappointed by that scene. How this man keep getting opportunities to fuck up this bad? Let's just talk about it. So, talk by Sony is in bed with a white guy, and clearly, like I said before, I think all white people look alike because I thought it was the other guy. Mm-hmm. Um, the Italian, the first Italian, the 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 mob boss's son is nice with the pistol. Like he clean got talk, uh, Tony out of here quickly. Uh, 
But <laughs> so he he tussles with bro on the ground. He picks up the gun, can't shoot for shit, can't hold the gun straight at all. Shoot him. No, first of all, I'm <laughs> never rolling around on the ground with somebody and my first reaction is shoot him. That's not I'm never going to tell you to do that. Uh, absolutely. Ne- what? Shoot him. <laughs> shoot him. <laughs> no. Uh, dumb dumb decision. How about whoop his ass? How about we jump the fuck out of him right yes. now? Yes. What are we doing here, yeah. fam? What are we doing? Wrestle him off of me, please. But Why then, do you have to shoot him? But then hilariously. You don't take the bunny of your gun and hit it on the back of his head and get him off of me. Bro shoots. Bro. <laughs> it was just funny because I think the sound effect of him dropping also just added to the comedy effect. And it. then gets shot and runs away. <laughs> Finish the job. Oh, Bro couldn't even handle the pistol straight. Manages to shoot you. Like, oh, that, he is the absolute he's worst. He's the worst. He's, he's the, the fucking worst. worst. <laughs> he is the worst. That shit My was fault. hilarious. I was crying while that shit Same. was happening. Same. I I'm watched like, the scene not at least this Benny Hill shit. He done killed the <laughs> boss's son. <laughs> Whew. Yeah. Woo no. we Couldn't get any more worse for him. Your ass is through. You oh, are for sure. through. For sure. Juke goes on a date with bro from the church. She kisses him, but for some reason, I don't think sparks were flying. No, she didn't even like that shit. She did not. That's crazy, Juke. You gonna switch up your sexuality if you hide it from your mama, huh? Mm-hmm. Ooh, we. Yep. This is a damn shame, boy. Spider do some make you do some crazy shit. Yeah. Yep. <sighs> Rock is mad about Burke and brings it to Omar Epps. She then tries to lie to Howard about Symphony. He then not only tells her about freeing Kanan, but then informs her about Scrap. <laughs> okay, so first part of this, not you speaking French. <laughs> we, <laughs> this could be a, it could, it could cause us problems. Us, <laughs> like the U.S., this country. <laughs> the fuck you talking about? It ain't been no us. Hold on, ho, oh, oh. whoa, whoa. It ain't been us in a long ass time. Yep. You ain't been wanting to talk to me. Uh, like, uh, hey, hey, hey. Wouldn't get the hell on out of here with that son. us shit. Yeah, get on out of here. If she you gets you on some bullshit. <laughs> and now there's a us out of nowhere. Talking about us is going to be bad for us. I'm going to play the fuck out of crazy like I didn't know. I'm like, oh, Kanan, it was you? <laughs> oh, my God. I, 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 I still can't remember, but it was you? Really? I'm going to play the hell out of crazy. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you shot me, bro. All of that, all of that, you know, me protecting you shit, that shit can go down the river. If push come to shove. Mm-hmm. Yep. Simple. For you him, better get on. I'm talking about us. Now, the reveal about Scrappy. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. That's one of those moments that can be a breaking point for a character. Mm-hmm. And so now we'll see what that does to Rock weighing on her conscience that she was so quick. Without even questioning my dude. Like I think that's why they edited it the way it did. Like that was an edit we've never seen in power before. The just She was fucking freeze shocked. Frame on her. Yeah, no, for she sure. She was shocked. It was that scene and probably another scene you get ready to talk to now where they was like zeroed in on her face. She's an excellent actor. Yeah. Excellent no, she actor. Is. She is. Um but like really great shots of just her like, yo, I really fucked up. Mm-hmm. Scrap was the most loyal soldier I had, and I clipped him off of your word, and you just gave me a my bad. I fucked up. Yeah. yeah. Yikes. Burke seems to be on the verge of finding everything out, but she can't figure out the shooting, the Kane and shooting uh, Howard. Her lesbian lover is concerned, and Burke looks like she's been losing sleep over this shit, which is absolutely nuts. Yeah, and, and, and that's another thing. It's like, I don't know if she's internal affairs or if she's just obsessing over the case, which, girl, what, what? And so when you put him in jail or something, like, I guess that's your aim, to put Howard in jail. What is it, What is that going to, like, you going to go, ooh, man, glad I got the job done. Is it that it means that much to you? Who's gonna want to be partners with you after this? No one. No one. You're probably not gonna work at that department if you're a cop again. Yeah. Yep. I I, I legitimately 
Howard didn't do nothing wrong to you. Like he didn't, he wasn't a dick to you. You're, this isn't revenge. And on top of that, you're <laughs> I using, don't get it. You're using work hours and you're not doing any. Yo, actual fam, work. she does no police work whatsoever. <laughs> None. The only thing she is ever working on is Howard. Like, could you imagine going into work and then the 40 hours a week that you've worked, which police officers obviously work more, but the 40 hours, you don't do your job. You just try to find as much dirt on, on your, your partner, on your partner. Right. You just snooping. You're going to get fired for that. Like, come on now. When they try to, if she does try to bring that shit to the captain, I, I, I can only imagine what kind of resistance she's going to meet. And then all of this is going to be for not. I was going to say that that discounts the whole blue line bullshit. Mm. So, yeah, for sure. Kanan's now ex-girlfriend pulls up to snitch to rock about Kanan and homegirl. My mama fucking your son. <laughs> uh, like, yo, going to your boyfriend's mom to snitch on your mom because she's smacking him is is insane. Yes. That is fucking crazy. Warranted, but insane. Like, also, not stop, like, not stopping when your daughter comes home and realizes that you are in the bed yeah, that, that shit with was him. fucking weird that's why i think she's touched in the head like bro what what the fuck what is yeah. on What's your, what are you on yeah which is weird because they seemed to be pretty close-knit when we first met them and it also doesn't seem like the first time she's probably done this. No. Well, well, maybe she's done it in secrecy, though. Uh-huh. Necro dumbass. We say it like, like she probably just fucks all her boyfriends. Yeah. And it, it definitely seems, like you said, it definitely seems like this wasn't the first time. Yeah. But maybe she got away with it all the times before. And, and now she like, nah, his mama But it legit. seemed like they were in cahoots when we first met them. I don't know. Yeah, no, no, no. You definitely right. I thought that they were they was like finessing him at first. Yeah. But then like her reaction when she walked in showed me that like she was hurt. So she which, she wasn't in on the the gambit. Which I don't understand. How that she was all was hurt sicko mama. They barely seem like boyfriend and girlfriend. Well, well I mean, with, they, at least with Davina, you know, we saw them go on dates and do shit. The only time we've ever seen them together was the first time at the party. The second time where she didn't even seem happy to see Kanan, and then this time. To to Jamaica and, Queens relationship and, and bro was happy to canoodle with the white girl in the Catskills. So she ain't gotta know about all that. What you snitching? Am I telling her you the ops, bro? That's crazy. You out here giving reports and shit? Am I telling the character? You a right witness? Now? You turn state witness? That's wild. Damn, that's, wild. that's crazy. Into... Hating on my dude. My point is, that's it just nuts. doesn't seem like they really give a fuck about each other. All hey, whatever you say, officer. That's crazy. I'm cutting all that out. Uh, <laughs> Juke put the tape on Homeboy's porch, and for some reason, Howard is in the neighborhood. So Juke freaked out. Howard actually showed up to ask questions about Burke. I wonder if she heard that. And if she did, you going to be state witness for Burke? You see Juke looking at them. I wonder if you she don't was know, like listening. Yeah, you don't know if she, she heard what was She said. better not. All because you want Kanan away from his daddy? His real daddy? Yeah. I hope not. I do too. I hope not. I hope not. Don't alert Burke to shit. To nothing. Yep. Zisa's new song not only doesn't sound like the 90s once again, but it's absolutely ass. And and I think, what's the name? Here's that. Lulu hears that immediately. And guess who works his ass off of the, off of the damn switches? Ah, don't do that. I told you this wasn't no good deal, bro. You got points on the loan. You got a due date. And now you done already gave up a piece of the business. So he probably going to make you pay your majority to pay the bill if it don't, if he don't got it. Yeah. Give me that point. Ah, ah, ah. A cop takes a report from Tony's widower, the, the homeboy. Mm. Um, racist homeboy is holed up in a pigeon coop. Rock is watching uh, SBZ pack up and basically aims to kill him but then doesn't strange that symphony Nuts. doesn't recognize her car as well he wasn't paying her no attention he looked at the car for a little bit and then just kind of did one of those huh and then just went back to what he was doing 
I think if you if you see a car that looked like somebody's that you know and that they just passed by, it's probably not the person. Sure. But, nigga, the face that she was making when she was making the decision on whether or not she was actually going to kill Symphony, mm-hmm. I was like, you better not. You better not. Because it was, it was, I was thinking for a second she might actually just pull up and do it, which would have been a very epic TV moment, but it would have been a little bit shocking to us, too. So I, I get why they didn't didn't actually go ahead and do it. Well, for one thing, she she shoots him and then leaves him to lay there. And she was going to kill him. Right. But yeah. then she would have shot him and drove off. Right. Leaving Symphony to just <laughs> be right in front of, like, when everybody wakes up because it was at night, they're, they're all going to see yeah, that. Nigga, look, he, she needed him dead, not disappeared. Sure, I guess. If you can't talk, you can't talk. You know. But then that leaves Burke to be like, oh, he went to her and she killed him. That would be an assumption. How could she prove that? Well, she couldn't prove it. Yeah. But... I don't know. I mean, she could say it till the cows come home. Prove it. Well, she can't even prove it. She can't, can't prove. Shot. She can't prove a damn thing. Yeah. Everything she got then came from them damn records. Yeah. Her guy on the inside and evidence or, or files or wherever the hell he's at is 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 her golden goose. Yes. That's the smoking gun right but there. But it's it's that's dead now. So. <sighs> Your homeboy probably about to get fired. Yes, one thousand percent. Uh, in the next episode, we see Rock questions Kanan about his new Breezy and threatens her with a gun. The radio DJ still being mad disrespectful to Lou until he gets a gun pulled out Now you about to get a pistol in your mouth. In front of Zisa, by the way. You see what, you see what Talker Smart gets you? 1,000%. Howard is concerned about Burke pulling his records, and Burke pulls up on Rock. Unique warns Marvin about the mob boss's son. Since he's dead now. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Unique's going to use that as an opportunity for sure. Not sure how. I guess we'll see in next week's episode, but he's definitely going to take advantage of that. Burt pressing rock, not a good move because she gets skittish. Yeah. Her trigger finger is happy, and you're a rookie cop. You mean nothing. Yeah. Yep. You mean nothing. And you're probably going to say something stupid. She literally set the whole city on fire last summer to kill Howard, a decorated cop. <laughs> what you think she's going to blow up killing you? And she won't send Kanan to do that one. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it'd be smarter to kill Burke for everybody. So. Right, for everyone involved. Like I thought she that that whole pull up scene was for Burke, not for Symphony. Well, that would maybe she's learned from the scrap situation and not decides to listen to Howard the first time. <laughs> that well, because because Howard didn't tell her that Symphony snitched. She just came to that conclusion on her own. But maybe she's learning that she shouldn't well, it was rush because to... He asked her, he asked Brock, what does he know? Yeah. And she was like, he don't know what he know. Right. So, like, he's implicated in that shooting. Mm-hmm. He just doesn't know it. Yeah. And, and so, that's where Howard is like, so he a problem. Yeah. Because the minute he get in there and they make him talk, he going to have to say, she called me. I picked him up. I took him here. I didn't ask no questions. But all of that suggests that. It was for a reason. Agreed. So, yeah, no, that that maybe she learned from that, and she's deciding that clipping Burke is the better option for literally everybody. I would think so, because it is. Any other thoughts on the seventh episode of season two for Power Book Three? That's gonna be it for me, man. Give us your thoughts on this week's episode as well as the review. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and come back next week for episode eight review of Raising Canaan. That's right. And make sure you subscribe because we will be talking about power for the rest of the season. And if Ghost is next, I don't know. It seems to be like it's probably going to be the next one. We'll Maybe be here for that. So make sure you subscribe for that as well.